Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Leakage Models of Multi-Winding Transformer and Implication to LLC Converter. There are some videos which are relevant to this presentation. You can find them by searching in YouTube, in the search box of YouTube, by Sam Ben Yaakov and Leakage, and you'll find a number of videos related to this presentation which give the background. In one of these videos, I've shown that if you have a coupled inductor or a transformer with, which is not ideal, then you can represent this element by any one of these configurations with proper transformation so that any of these will act exactly the same because the input to output transfer ratio of current and voltage as well as the impedances are the same and there are many more of course here i'm showing only three there are sort of infinite ways of representing this coupled inductor with a mutual inductance by an equivalent circuit that has the leakage in it and some parallel magnetization element. Furthermore, I consider the case of an LLC in which we have a transformer and normally we will embed the parallel inductor into the transformer as the magnetization inductance. So we have an element here, a magnetic element, which is a coupled inductor. And I've shown that you can take any one of these configurations, and there are some others, and replace the coupled inductor with them, and then run the simulation, and all of them will give you the same performance. That is, this is the basic coupled inductor with two inductors and actually coupling coefficient. And then these are replicas of this, with proper transformation showing the actual leakage. Here it is here, and here it is on the two sides. Now what happens, however, if you have, a say, an LLC with a half-bridge rectifier, let's call it, and then you have two windings here, so you have a coupled inductor with three windings. Very important to know that these models that I'm talking about are non-supportive of this case. That is, these models do not take into account, they cannot, do not provide for coupling between, say, the two windings here. There have been many papers showing how to build a equivalent circuit for the multi-winding case. Here is one example. This is this paper. This is a three-dimension type of a model, but there are some two-dimensional models all of them are quite complex and I don't think that you like to get into it because these are really not simple and not trivial. So in this presentation, I'm going to run simulation to demonstrate what happens if you use the regular equivalent circuit that we are used for a two terminal case in the case of three windings and starting with the basic coupled inductor case, two inductors and a coupling coefficient, and then also representing it by the different equivalent circuit in which the leakage is one side or another. I'll show this in detail in the next few slides. And to compare the result and see how good are these transformations in this case. So the basic circuit looks like that. I have in excitation. I've used the sinusoidal waveform just to ease the simulation program in handling the waveform. A sharp square wave might cause convergence problem, so I'm using a sinusoidal waveform. This is the resonant capacitor, and here we have the coupled inductors with some coupling coefficient. In this first case, all of them are equal, 0.85. These are the two inductors. Well, they are defined in the parameter command. And then we have the rectifier and the output section. So this is the basic reference, which is correct. There's no question about that, okay? So here is one of the equivalent circuits. This is a very popular equivalent circuit in which the two leakage inductances on the two sides. This is the magnetization. This is an ideal transformer. It is formed by 
a coupling coefficient of one between all of these and also the inductance is made very large by multiplying the inductance by 1k which means that uh, it is very large as compared to the other inductances and therefore you can consider the inductance like infinite so this is by definition the ideal transformer coupling coefficient of one and infinite inductance for the uh, inductors so this is an ideal transformer these are the leakages as you'll see here i've put two leakages for each one of the winding as if each one was by itself okay we have nothing to represent the coupling between these two this model is not built for it i can represent the coupling between this here this side and this side and this is the inductance and then we have two very interesting configurations in which the inductance the leakage inductance is on one side here on the right this is the magnetization and then we have the leakage inductance on the other side and this is the magnetization so this represents the case like you have the leakage all the leakage is here and all the leakage is here as i've shown earlier if this would have been a two terminal network which is two winding also all these would show exactly the same performance so the question is what happens now in this case in which i have a third winding and in these models there is no provision to show the coupling between these two so i'm starting off with the same coupling coefficient between the three windings this is the basic generic couple inductor model okay so these are coupled by this definition and they have some inductances here and I'm running it as compared to the other and we'll be showing the input current here the current of one of the diodes and the voltage in this point this is a very sensitive point because with the leakage here if there is leakage here then with the capacitance of the diode there might be some parasitic oscillation so this is a very sensitive point to watch and here are the results now this is the input current now this is the result of the four configuration the ideal one or the generic one or the accurate one and all the other equivalent circuit they show exactly the same current that's one top of the other you see here they are this is the diode current they're exactly the same but look what happens with this voltage that i've mentioned let's have a look at it here 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 it is in one case it is a very nice square wave in all other cases it is like oscillating and indeed if you look if you zoom in i see the oscillation here this is very smooth no problem here so who is this well this is this case in which the inductance the leakage inductance is on the left and here there is no leakage inductance and there is just coupling ideal coupling of one coupling coefficient of one between two the two sides so therefore there is like no leakage here and therefore the oscillation is actually suppressed so there is no oscillation in this case so this is the only case in which there are no oscillation with this model while here when you have inductances there are some oscillation between this inductance and the capacitance of the diode now this is for the all cases for the equivalent circuit definitely the only one which is correct is the generic coupled inductor model from the physics textbook and in that case we have oscillation this one although it is equivalent in this particular case because this coupling is now one which is not correct okay in the actual situation this is not one and we can't show it here in this model so therefore this one is incorrect so of all of these these are correct and this is not correct so now to prove my point I'm making the coupling coefficient between these two in the correct case in the coupled inductor case generic model I'm making it to be one 
So there is now very good coupling between these two. And lo and behold, in this case, I see that the two circuits, the original one with K3 equal to 1 and the one that I've shown earlier, show very clean waveform. All the others have oscillation. So this teaches us that the coupling between the auxiliary winding is very important. If you make the transformer such that the coupling will approach one for these two, although these can be different, you see here, then you will minimize the onset of oscillation because the leakage between these two is minimized and this is the reason for the resonant network. And now I went the other way and that is to make the coupling here between these two very small, like 0.5. The others are as before. And in this case, we see that the generic model shows a different behavior. So all the others are incorrect because they can't show this effect of a low coupling coefficient between this auxiliary winding. Now, due to the show time available for this presentation, I have not tested cases in which these are different, which could be, of course, the case. So there are many, many variations. So what I'm showing here is just a sample of all possibilities. So my conclusion is that in the case of a multi-winding transformer, do not use leakage models. This should be models for simulation. Use the basic coupling inductor model. Well, we are not very much used to it because we are used to look at the leakage, etc. But I think it is worthwhile to get used to the very basic generic model. Once you work with it, you'll get used to it and it will operate like any other model and it gives you accurate result because this is the physics of the system. This is not an equivalent circuit which breaks down in the case of multi-winding. It's fine, excellent for a two-winding case, but for more than two, uh, you have to incorporate somehow the coupling between the other windings, which you cannot do with the very simple model. You have to resort to a much complex model. Now the question is, of course, how do you get the coupling coefficient in, in this case, or the mutual inductance, which is the same because they are related by this equation. That is the mutual inductance is the coupling coefficient square root of the two windings. And I'm talking now about the coupling coefficient between any of these two windings, this, because this is what you need. You need the coupling coefficient between this and this, neglecting this, between this and this, neglecting this, and then between this and this. So in each case, it is like a uh, two terminal network, two windings only. So what are the methods that you can use uh, to get the coupling coefficient? Well, there are a number of methods and I'm showing here three approaches. One is the classical method. The classical method hinges on the fact that you can represent the magnetic element in this configuration. This is what I've said at the beginning. And this is very convenient to understand what is going on. So if you represent it in this configuration and you short the output, then this is an ideal transformer. So you have a short here. So what you see is this leakage reflected to the input, so to speak. So this is the leakage. This is the inductance that you'll see here. So. Now, if you take this inductance divided by L1, 1 minus this expression, L1 is divided out, so we got this one, which is k squared, so the square root of this expression, this is what you measured with the short, this is L1, the total inductance, it gives you k, and that's it. Now, if you want to know what is the Terence ratio, then this is the square root of L1 over L2, so you can measure the inductance one side and then there is another method which is based on the concept of mutual inductance. This is a equivalent circuit 
with dependent sources of the coupled inductor case. We have two voltage sources, each one depends on the current on the other side. This is not coupling anymore. I mean the coupling is done by the fact that this source is a function of this and this source is a function of this. This is not coupled anymore. So this is a representation, a sort of a explanation you might say, of what is going on here. So if I know that this voltage source is J omega m i1, then if I inject a current here and measure the voltage here, then this is what I'm getting. This is no, this is what I have injected. This is the voltage that I'm measuring. So from here you can get out m and then of course you can get the coupling coefficient. So this is another way, which in some times could be even better than doing the short, because with the short you have a problem of leakage here, and if the turns ratio is very high, that is the voltage here is very low in operation, the leakages are very small, then the short here and the wiring could cause you a problem. On the other hand, if you just measure the voltage, then you don't worry about these leakages. So this is, of course, the impedance of the meter has to be high, which is normally. Another method, which is a little bit tricky, but it is sort of similar to the first one, is the following. And that is based on the fact that, first of all, we have a ideal transformer here. So the voltage transfer is N1 over N2. This is the number of turns here, number of turns here. And then the voltage here is due to a divider, okay? This leakage inductance and this magnetization. So the divider here is this impedance divided by the total impedance. Total impedance is L1. So if you divide this by L1, you get K squared. So therefore, the voltage here is V1 times K squared, and this is the voltage here. And then the voltage here is related to the voltage that you are measuring by the turns ratio. So from that, you can get the coupling coefficient to be this expression. And if you don't know the turns ratio, then you can measure the inductances and then the turns ratio is the square root of this inductance. So this will be the third possibility that I'm showing. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.